Hello, and welcome to this first look at the multiplayer pre-alpha for Company of Heroes 3. If you're just stepping into the Company of Heroes franchise or are a returning player, then this is the video for you. You may have already taken part in the recent single player campaign alpha, but this is the multiplayer alpha, which will be available for all of you to play from the 30th of November. In this video, I'll be discussing the following aspects of the multiplayer alpha. First, what's included. Second, optimal settings for smooth gameplay. Third, new multiplayer mechanics. And fourth, battle group systems. As always, check the description of this video if you want to jump to any particular section. The CO3 multiplayer alpha will allow you to play two of the game's factions, US forces for allies and Wehrmacht for Axis. The British faction, which was part of the single player campaign, is not part of the multiplayer alpha. You'll be able to play both PvP and AI battles up to a maximum of four players per game. There are four maps to play in total, which are already looking close to release quality, and players will be able to play in a variety of terrains such as urban towns, farmlands, and beach landing sites. The AI currently has a fixed level of difficulty, but in my playthroughs I found it to be an acceptable level of difficulty, with a relatively competent enemy AI for this stage of development. Just like other games in the franchise, you'll be able to change the game mode between Victory Point and Annihilation Mode, and also choose to start the game with standard or high resources. If you're interested to see what that looks like, I've already uploaded a video on my channel of a 2v2 game versus AI with no commentary for those who are interested in the pure gameplay experience. You can create a public game straight from the main menu, or you can join public games listed in the Browse Games section. If you just want to jump straight into the action, there's a random skirmish option as well, which launches you straight into the game. Now onto the in-game graphical settings. It took quite a few attempts for me to find the correct settings to play the game smoothly, and you may have to tweak things in order to find the best setup for you. You can actually change and play around with the graphical settings whilst you're in-game, so I'd recommend loading up an AI game and playing around to get the best fit for you. These are my settings which allow me to play a smooth game with decent enough graphics, and it may help some of you if you're struggling to improve the frame rate of the game. You may want to try copying these settings in each tab exactly to get the same output that I have. While I can't exactly say what makes the biggest difference to graphical settings, I found that using borderless full screen and limiting the frame rate to 60 FPS had the biggest effect on overall performance, more than image quality and texture detail. I don't have a super powered PC build, so I was happy that I was able to play on these settings using a fourth generation i7, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and a GTX 1080. Players who are familiar with Company of Heroes 1 and 2 will notice that there have been some changes to positioning within the user interface. So if we look at the moment, the bottom left hand side of the screen is now where you see all of the unit icons for your army. Uh, now in Company of Heroes 1 and 2, the icons are in the top right hand side and that's the familiar position for most players. Fortunately, if you do still prefer it that way, you can simply go into the settings, go to the UI tab and change it back to the top right hand side. Personally, when I was playing through the multiplayer alpha, I found this to be more helpful than having it in the bottom left hand side of the screen. I think it improves gameplay readability having it in the top right, but try both ways and see what works for you. All right, so let's talk about what some of the new features are in Company of Heroes multiplayer that I personally think you should try out when you download the multiplayer pre-alpha. Firstly, one of the things I thought was really innovative and interesting was this ability to have auto reinforce back at the headquarters. Um, for those who don't play Company of Heroes, your squads typically are made up of uh, four or five uh, man teams. And as you drop uh, members of that squad, you have to go back to the base and reinforce them. So 
Normally you have to do that manually by hitting the reinforce button, but actually Relic have given this auto reinforce toggle ability. And when you have this on, what it means is that, as you can see here, the units, when they get back to base, automatically reinforce those squads. If you then couple this up with the healing on the headquarters, or if you're playing the US forces, you can build a medical station next to the base, it means your units will run back to base when you hit retreat, automatically reinforce and heal. And that's really, really cool because it means that when you look back in your base and you're trying to uh, figure out what units have retreated there and you want to get them back onto the field, it's really, really quick. They're already healed. They're already ready to go. Uh, and that makes the game a lot quicker and a lot more beginner friendly. Uh, one of the other cool mechanics, if you didn't get to play the single player campaign alpha, um, one of the mechanics that's really fun and again really helpful to new players is this uh, tactical pause. So tactical pause basically allows you to pause the game in real time um, and then it allows you to give units commands uh, which will all be enacted once you unpause. So in this situation where I'm up against this scout car and some grenadiers, um, it looks like it can even see the upcoming actions of the enemy, which is really actually quite cool. So I can see the scout cars targeting this squad. I can see exactly where these grenadiers are going to go. So that allows me to say I want my rifleman to go in this building. I'm going to get um, this rifleman squad to go on the other side uh, of green cover here. So they're actually protected a bit more from the scout car. Uh, we're going to get our units that are back in the base, this paratrooper and mortar. We're going to tell them to walk here. In fact, the paratroopers can, can actually come into this engagement. Along the way, we'll get them to upgrade with bazookas to help deal with the scout car. The mortar's just going to set up here and provide support. Um, then, you know, we have a strafing run, which we'll use on the grenadier squad. Uh, we may be able to do some teching. I don't have the fuel for it right now, but you could tech, you could build. Basically, you can do anything while tactical pause uh, is on. And then when you unpause, everything is just going to move on its own. And that is so, so cool. Um, and you see here, really, like, it's just so nice. And actually, because the game is so beautiful and fun to watch, even if you're a high level player, you'll find yourself just wanting to use tactical pause so you can set up a really cool engagement uh, and then just go watch the cinematic experience, which is really what Company of Heroes is all about. One of the other nice features that I'd like to point out, which is uh, something that was seriously missing from Company of Heroes 2, it's so good to see it back in Company of Heroes, is the ability to ping teammates uh, in multiplayer games. So in Company of Heroes 1 you were able to ping uh, attack, defend and capture signals. Uh, and now we've got attack pings, defend pings and question pings in the bottom left hand corner of the screen there. Um, and that's really useful because it allows you to communicate um, faster than you can type, so I can tell my uh, my teammate to attack this fuel point here. You can see on the minimap it is uh, kind of flashing red with a circle symbol, uh, which means attack. Uh, maybe I can ping a defend symbol when I need a VP defended, and that's a green signal. And then if we send a, a question ping, which Relic describes as a look here ping to your allies. This is kind of a vague, <laughs> something's happening, take a look, decide for yourself. Um, but this is really useful, it's really, really good to have that back in the game. It just really, really helps players play quickly, um, you know, and not have to worry about typing, typing the location. Uh, Company Heroes 2 had an attack ping, like a single ping. Um, which wasn't really that useful. It's much easier to give a quick command that everybody can recognize. So uh, really good to see that back in the game. Here we can see an example of the new breach mechanic being used in multiplayer. The riflemen from the enemy team are trying to evict my assault grenadiers from this garrison building by throwing grenades through the door and then occupying the building themselves. As you can see, it will force my squad to get out of the building 
giving the riflemen time to get into the building or pass through the building and get that finishing blow. Breach is a bit buggy in the current multiplayer build, but Relic are fine-tuning this feature. I'm sure you'll agree though, it ticks all the boxes for looking awesome. Now it's time to have a look at the battle group system in Company of Heroes 3. In the multiplayer pre-alpha, there are two battle groups available for each faction, which will give you access to unique units and abilities. Once you select a battle group, there will be two tech trees which you can invest your available command points into at any time. Players who are familiar with the franchise already will see that this is very similar to the Co-1 battle group system. In this scenario, I'm going to pick the Breakthrough battle group, which features the mighty Tiger Tank as a late game unlock. Once unlocked, the abilities can be selected from the right side of the screen and then used based on resource availability. Sometimes unlocking an item from the battle group will be passive and allow you to construct a new unit from a base building or unlock abilities on units that you already have. Players will have to make a decision on whether they should focus on a strategy that complements their gameplay with off-map abilities and strong early game units, or push all available command points into powerful late game units like the Tiger. There are pros and cons to each approach, but the main point of the battle group system is that it gives your faction a chance to surprise your opponent with units and abilities which are not included in the base faction alone. This allows you to overcome, or in some cases, completely counter your opponent's army composition. Something else which is new to the multiplayer experience in Company of Heroes 3 uh, are these three icons on the left hand side of the screen. You'll find this both for the US forces and Wehrmacht armies. And uh, let's just have a look at the Wehrmacht options first. So you have three field marshals, uh, fortifications field marshal, mechanized field marshal, and special ops field marshal. Uh, each one will give you a little bit of a description and tells you what will happen if you select it. So here, um, before I do this, let's just look at these grenadiers. You can see that their only ability right now is uh, the Panzerfaust used to snare vehicles. So if I uh, look at fortifications field marshal, it says grenadiers will be equipped with rifle grenades. Bunkers can be reinforced bunkers, tanks can hold down, uh, infantry receive med kits, so on, so on. So if I click this now, you will see uh, that rifle grenades uh, and med kits have now been added to the grenadier squad. Uh, so this is really cool. Uh, this allows you to further customize uh, the faction, like personalize it to your uh, tastes when you're playing. I really like that because uh, every time you play this game, it should be slightly different. So actually by this system of the field marshals and then the battle group system of which you'll have three battle groups to choose from, uh, you will be able to have very, very diverse gameplay in multiplayer. Now let's have a look at what the US forces has in place of the field marshal system for Wehrmacht that we saw in the previous clip. So you'll notice that at the start of the game, you no longer have the three options on the left hand side to select a field marshal. For US, the system works slightly differently. On your headquarters, you have the opportunity to upgrade uh, a support center, either air support center, mechanized support center, or infantry support center. We're going to go with air support center, which is going to give me access to some recon planes, strafing runs, and bombing runs, which are pretty good for clearing out garrisons and bunkers that you find across the map. What's really nice about upgrading the support centers onto your headquarters is that when you do actually complete the upgrade, the aesthetic of the base changes, which is really cool because a radio tower will spawn on the left side of the headquarters. Um, and that just makes the base look cool as well as kind of showcasing that there has been progression in the match. It's quite nice uh, if you're playing against another player and you scout their base, you see what they've got uh, because the aesthetic has changed and that means you kind of know what the uh, teching is and perhaps what they're going for. So that's really cool. It's a really nice feature in Company of Heroes 3. Okay, so there's our radio tower. Now you see on the left-hand side where the field marshals were for Wehrmacht. Now we've got the air support center's abilities here, which is a recon run, 
a strafing run, and a dive bomb. So it's worth noting that when you first use this recon run, you'll find that it doesn't actually give you visibility on the map, but what it does is it actually just detects units in the fog of war, whilst not actually revealing the units in fog of war. So fog of war stays on, you just see the units. Basically, if you click on the support center itself, you'll see that it actually has its own upgrades. So you've got advanced air reconnaissance, air supply, air supremacy, and double sortie. In this case, because we want to make our re recon runs more effective, we're going to upgrade to advanced air reconnaissance. This will now make our recon run show actual visibility on the map through fog of war instead of just revealing the uh, placeholder icons. So now we have our advanced air reconnaissance upgraded. You can see that it will provide actual line of sight. So to use the recon, we'll click on the ability and then select the direction that we want the recon pass to go. The plane will now fly over and show full recon across the map. It's worth noting that you can only upgrade one of the three support centers and each one will help your US forces army progress later on into the game. One of the best ones for the late game I think is Mechanized Support Center because it unlocks a vehicle repair base which can actually help later on in the game if you prioritize a vehicle based army, something which the US forces does very well en masse. This concludes everything I wanted to discuss in the multiplayer alpha for Company of Heroes 3. Overall I've had a really good time playing the multiplayer alpha, I found myself enjoying the games uh, in a similar way to other games in the franchise. I haven't actually enjoyed some of the previous versions of multiplayer I've had access to as part of Relic's development team, so it's reassuring to me personally that some of the feedback and concerns that we brought up have actually been tweaked for the multiplayer release. And uh, I have to say, it is actually something that I can truly enjoy at the moment. There have been significant improvements in the game, especially in optimization since the campaign alpha, uh, which are noticeable immediately when you play, so do expect a much better overall gameplay experience. I'm actually really happy that players will finally be able to get their hands on the Wehrmacht army so they can feel the difference in character between the allied and Axis factions. I highly recommend downloading this multiplayer alpha and playing with your friends for the best experience. And don't forget to try out some of the things mentioned in this video and let me know in the comments section how you found it. Relic Entertainment for giving me early access to this build ahead of public release. And thanks also to you for watching this video. I hope that all of you have a great experience in the Company of Heroes 3 pre-alpha multiplayer. If you've enjoyed this content, please do like and subscribe to the channel. You can also find some more live gameplay footage of Company of Heroes 3 uh, on the channel as well. Your support is appreciated. Thanks for watching.